Hello everybody, this is me, your teacher, uh, and your lecturer, and uh, mm, before we start our online teaching, um, this semester, due to the unusual situation we are facing, I would like to drag you uh, through a number of questions and to, through a number of issues. Uh, because I think that as English-speaking students, mostly foreigners, you may feel a little bit confused um, right now uh, and uh, I frankly I don't know if the things I'm going to say today um, are going to be of any help uh, I hope so um, so but I have just this feeling that before we start whatever we start in uh, specific groups, whether it's uh, philosophy or business ethics and etiquettes or facing the others or anti-discrimination policy, uh, there is some kind of introduction needed. Uh, so first thing first, I'm as you can see, I'm not a professional, so, um, mm, I mean, I am a professional cook, as you can see. Um, I might be a professional lecturer or researcher, but I'm not very uh, good with digital media. I'm not loved by the camera, which I have been told so many times. So. Um, Please be patient uh, and uh, not too critical about uh, this uh, performance. Um, thank you in advance. Um, and there is a reason I'm doing this from uh, my kitchen, which actually looks surprisingly good um, on the video better than in reality. I'm very glad about that. The washing machine is on. Uh, no, this is a dishwasher actually. The dishwasher is on. The kids uh, have been served the dinner. Um, and uh, this is what it looks like actually. Um, so any minute um, a young gentleman or a young gentlewoman may enter the kitchen with a very gentle request of some kind. Um, this is how remote work looks for a woman. And there is no need to pretend that you can do it any other way. Uh, if you have to take care of your kids who cannot go to school or preschool or kindergarten or wherever they go and have to do the remote work, then you are actually screwed up. And uh, that's just a fact, that's just a basic fact. You know, it doesn't need any further uh, uh, comments. You don't get it when you don't have kids. Once you get them and you are a woman or a conscious male partner, then, yeah. Uh, so, um, this is just a short uh, introduction about uh, remote work and its uh, uh, bright sides. Um, so, um, the first thing I want to say today, don't worry, it's not going to last 
more than 20 minutes. Okay, so I have to reduce myself to 20 minutes, which I not, I don't want how I'm going to do that, but I just have to speed up. Uh, so first of all, there is a number of things I would like you to think about, to reconsider, to rethink. Uh, and the first of them is the history of pandemics, right? Uh, so, um, this is a very simple question. How much have you learned at school about uh, the history of pandemics? How much have you learned about uh, the Spanish influenza? And how much have you learned about World War I? These two things happened almost at the same time. The Spanish influenza outbreak was 1918 yes? uh, and it lasted for about two years. So it started when uh, World War I was actually heading towards its end. Uh, and uh, now it is really funny to think uh, and to realize that uh, we have been tormented by our history teachers uh, with, you know, whatever is to be tormented about the military history, right? The origins of the conflict, the, you know, the Europe and the world at the beginning of the 20th century, the social changes, the uh, the movements of the front line, uh, the casualties, the, the victims, the mortality, um, the politics behind it, uh, uh, the peace and what followed, and so on and so on and so on. So, you know, to make myself clear, I had most wonderful history teachers at school, and I hope you did too. So I'm very grateful to them because they actually made me love history, which is a huge thing. Um, and I don't regret that I learned something, but I do regret that I haven't learned something. And you should be too, actually. Because how much do you know about the history of pandemics? Do you have any knowledge? about the history of Spanish influenza? Do you have any knowledge about the number of uh, victims? Have you any idea that actually the number of victims of the Spanish influenza was much bigger than the number of victims of World War I? Very cautious estimations um, say that it was something about 50 million deaths out of one disease. Um, and uh, probably one third of the world population was uh, infected with it. Uh, do you know any testimonies of people who were the survivors of the influenza? Do you? Um, do you know the statistics? Do you know how people actually used to deal with their loss, with their individual personal tragedies, like losing a kid, losing a mother, losing parents, um, or the whole family? I think it's, it's time that we, you know, rethink the way we teach history and the way we absorb history. Uh, I'm not saying that my knowledge about political history is not important. I, of course, I cannot, you know, get rid of it. It's in my head. Um, but on the other hand, um, I think it would be so 
useful if we knew a little bit more about the history of pandemics. Um, now, why do we know so little about them? Well, the answer is very easy. And it actually coincides with the answer to the question why the Spanish influenza has been called the Spanish influenza. Because most people at that time believed it originated in Spain, which is not true. The truth is that uh, in 1918, um, Spanish, the Spain, sorry, Spain, um, <clears throat> was not censoring. Uh, the facts, the information, the news about uh, the outbreak and the scope of the influenza. Whereas other governments did it. Spain remained neutral during World War I. Though it didn't have, of course, every government has an interest in something. Yes? Let's don't be let's not be naive about that. But other governments had a vital interest in keeping the basic facts about the scale and the scope of the pandemics from you know, the public opinion. So the public opinion was actually lost in it. People did not know basic facts about the influenza. Uh, hence the name, because the Spanish wrote about it. The Spanish informed the public opinion, right? But it did not originate in, uh, in Spain. Probably it originated somewhere in the Far East. Uh, so, again, why do we know so little about it? Well, we know so little about it because um, History is always a tool in the hands of those who actually have the power, right? So it's not in the interest of the governments. It's not in the interest of the politicians, uh, those who speak in the name of the nation societies, however you call it, uh, to teach you about the pandemics. It is in their interest, it lays in their interest to teach you about the political history, right? And to expose some facts within political uh, uh, history. So that is why we know so little. Our knowledge about the pandemics is so limited and that is why we fear it so much. And uh, we think that we are going through something nobody actually in the history of the humankind went through, which is obviously not true. But we just don't know that. Okay, so this is the first thing. The next thing is that I would like to uh, ask yourselves a number of questions. Uh, just, you know, try to think about the answers. You don't have to submit them. This is just a, um, a suggestion what you should do. 
right now. It's a very good time to rethink. It's a very good time to think about your life um, in a new uh, way. Uh, maybe ask yourself a few questions anew. Or maybe even ask them for the first time. Right? So, um, just a few examples. Uh, how do you feel with yourself? Have your life been totally shifted to social media and the web? How many things you actually need to survive? What is the essence of your being? If your physical self has been reduced to a potential danger to the others, who are you in this context? Do you actually need so many people around you or maybe you are better off without them. Or maybe you are better off without some of them. So, you know, it's a good time to reconsider your friendships, your personal links. How many people have you helped? no matter in what way. Okay. If you don't know the answer yet to that question, I mean, it's not easy to answer them, uh, I can give you a hand. Actually, not me. Seneca, the younger. We had been going through the text, the Brevitate Vitae, by Seneca the Younger, with uh, uh, the students of the second year of uh, film and TV production. Um, so, um, I would like to draw your attention to this text once again or at all, uh, because Seneca could really give us a hand here, especially if we don't have, you know, ready-made notions, ideas in our uh, heads. So, <clears throat> Just a short quotation. Can anything be sillier than the point of view of certain people? I mean, those who boast of their foresight. They keep themselves very busily engaged in order that they may be able to live better. They spent life in making ready to live. They formed the purposes with a view to the distant future. Yet, postponement is the greatest waste of life. It deprives them of each day as it comes. It snatches from them the present by promising something hereafter. The greatest hindrance to living is expectancy, which depends upon the morrow and the wastes today. You dispose of that which lies in the hands of fortune. You let go that which lies in your own. Whither do you look? At what goal do you aim? <clears throat> All things that are still to come 
lie in uncertainty. Leave straight away. So, you know what, when I read it now, uh, I think about some of you thinking that life has actually stopped. So we are in the middle of something. God knows what, actually. And uh, I hear so many people, including my friends and co-workers, uh, repeating the same line, repeating the same sentence. When it's over, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. Okay, so, you know, they're very optimistic. I don't want to upset you, but how do you know that there is going to be any hereafter? At least for you. Well, I may have mentioned a couple of times that philosophy is basically about the perspective of death. And uh, it hasn't changed since. So we live in the perspective of death. And we don't know if there's going to be a tomorrow. So if we don't know that, specifically when all this you know, strange and unusual and unexpected things are going on around us. Then maybe it's start, maybe it's, you know, the highest time to stop pretending that this is something like, you know, in the middle of nowhere. This is life. So why have you stopped living? Because I think some of you have. Don't. I know that there is a number of things that we cannot do. We cannot go to a swimming pool. Or to a museum or to a pub. But this is not the end of the world. You can still take care of your life. Uh, you should do that, definitely. So try to think about my questions again and again, right? until you are able to answer them. Or Uh, right, so uh, I don't know if this has been uh, helpful. Uh, I hope so, the, the Seneca uh, piece. And the next thing I just uh, want to mention before we end it uh, uh, today is that I really would like you to think, or I think it's a good thing to think, uh, about... Uh, uh, caregivers today. You know, I'm I'm referring to David Graeber and his uh, uh, famous uh, vision of the phenomenon of the, of so-called bullshit jobs. So, with some of you, I'm going to discuss that, uh, and I'm going to make you read some stuff, unfortunately. But I think it's it's good. It's good to, to face this, specifically in the times of global pandemic. So let us confront just for a minute the bullshit jobs and the caregiver jobs. Yes? 
the definition of a caregiver is very broad. Uh, usually we think about doctors and nurses and people who work in hospitals, um, uh, paramedics, uh, people like that. But uh, actually the definition includes any medical uh, profession. But not only medical, a caregiver is someone who takes care of you, who keeps you safe. Um, a caregiver is someone, you know, this is very simple, who takes care, right? So a caregiver is a school teacher, a caregiver is a kindergarten uh, uh, teacher, a nanny, a cook. A caregiver is even a clinic lady, right? So, um, what do you think right now and today about caregivers? How valuable is their work? The job they do? Would you survive? without the care provided? Or would you not? And then... Thank you, Bishwar. Um, and then the next thing is... Oh, I have been distracted by the dishwasher, most unfortunately. So the thing is, what are bullshit jobs when we confront them with, you know, care giving? Well, this is a question we are going to, uh, 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 to uh, answer also during uh, our classes. And the last thing I want you to... I want to tell you about is what you actually do. do oh, this is just a suggestion. What you are, uh, should actually do uh, during the next couple uh, of uh, weeks. So, uh, first of all, I think this um, situation is going to last for at least a month or maybe even much, much longer. Uh, our knowledge about it is very limited. Uh, we don't know when exactly the pandemics is going to reach its peak. So um, uh, we will have to get used to this uh, uh, situation. And uh, mm, first of all, we are going to um, discuss a lot the idea of skepticism in the times of pandemics. I think it's a good thing to do. It might be also uh, very uh, useful when you look at the one of the classical definitions of uh, skepticism. Uh, it says that it is the suspension of judgment, <clears throat> sorry, due to the inadequacy of evidence. So we are right now facing the inadequacy of evidence. And if you think that you are being flooded with information and with facts uh, and thanks to this flood you know a lot then I'm sorry but I think you're wrong we still know very little about the dynamics of the pandemics uh, we are flooded yes but with 
fake news. Um, we don't exactly know what the government wants us to know and not to know about the pandemics. Because no matter how optimistic we are about our governments, and we are usually too optimistic about them, uh, there is always something going on yeah, behind the scenes. So right now in Poland, uh, mm, we face a very awkward situation. We are going to have presidential elections in May. And uh, actually, um, it should be postponed. It, it should be, you know, it's, it's not a very uh, <clears throat> um, I forgot what I wanted to say. Okay, but this is in real time. I'm not going to cut it. So um, this is what may happen at nine in the evening when you've done all the stuff. Uh, so what I wanted to say again is that uh, the pandemics thing uh does not actually favor the you know election thing so maybe it should be postponed but it turns out that the president doesn't want to do that so if he doesn't want to do that and this is already a part of his campaign why should we trust anything the politicians say about the pandemics and don't get me wrong I don't want to fuel your panic I just want you to get skeptical be skeptical accept the fact that your knowledge is limited try to find reliable sources of information stop checking on Facebook every two minutes uh, it's, it may ruin your mental health um, and basically nothing else is going to happen. You are not going to know more. It's enough to, you know, check the news in the morning and in the evening. And that's all. As to the rest, you should use your reason and self-preservation instinct and you should finally you should decide how are you going to go through this <clears throat> do you have any plans how to do that are you going to you know engage in some kind of social action or you or you are just going to stay home alone so you know whatever you do take care of yourself take care of your mental health take care of the others if you can there is a lot of people who need your help and uh, there are so many ways in which you can make a change however small so try to do that try to focus on this small little tiny things um read a lot and don't feel sorry for yourself um there's no need to. So after that video, uh, 
as I have already mentioned, the individual uh, group assignments are going to follow. You may expect them uh, tomorrow uh, or on Friday. I'm going to keep in touch with every group separately. If you have any questions, uh, I'm going to answer them via uh, messenger. So if there are any questions, please uh, let me know. I'm going to answer them um, every morning between 11 and 12. Uh, and uh, if there is anything else mm, I could do for you, then let me know. Uh, that's all. Take care of yourselves again. Uh, good luck and good night.